Hi, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradanini. And we are here today in beautiful Nevada City in front of an old Victorian. It's a gorgeous place to live. Yeah. I'm a native to the area and I can't wait to show you my favorite places. We have been loving this area and living this area for over 40 years. We can't wait to take you on a tour of some of the highlights of the areas that we like the most. So right now we're standing in Nevada City in front of the Nevada Theater, a wonderful place if you love live theater. And it's one of the oldest existing theaters in California. It is. Mark Twain was here, Jack London was here. It's got some great history and great theater still. This is, is the type of history that we have here. The gold miner days and all these fabulous old Victorians and vintage homes in our area. All the Victorians that are, you know, every other house in that area, and it's, they're just beautiful. There's such culture here. One of my favorite things are the rivers. Oh, yes. The rivers are right at our fingertips and they're just such a great place to go cool off. Rock outcroppings and places to explore and it's just a few minutes from downtown. Exactly. And, and the trails. Lots mm -hmm. of hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding trails in this area. I mean, well, we have BLM land is, you know, all around us. And so it's a lot of open land that you can take your mountain bike and go for miles and miles. Get on your horse and do that. Stop by the streams and the Yuba River, like you said. And also, you know, the Empire Mine, you know? We just kind of take that for granted because we live here. But that is wonderful history and a great tour to go there. It's also a great destination for family portraits or senior portraits for your student. Oh. Boy, those turn out. I've seen some real beautiful uh, wedding pictures and yes, yeah. family portraits. There's a lot of great uh, wedding venues around here, I've noted, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's just so much to offer here, and I think it's just it's quality of life and family and just things to do, not just um, if you're not into bicycling or, or hiking, if you're into just the, in history and checking out the area or music or theater or the arts. Um, there is just, there's just so much here. I know from young to old, whether you're retiring or beginning a family or it's just the place you want to reside, it's just it's got everything. It's got something for everyone. So we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Right now we're here in Nevada City in front of the Miner's Foundry, a very historic building with a wine tasting room right next door. And again, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradanini. And we are a mother-daughter team. Thank you for touring with us today. Welcome to the Firehouse Museum. I'm Wally Hagman. I'm the director and curator of the collection here. Uh, this building was built in 1861 and served as a firehouse from the times of hand-pulled carts till 1938 with motorized vehicles. In 1945 it became a museum courtesy of the City of Nevada and we have been there here ever since. This part of our collection represents the Nishinan Indians who are the indigenous people of this area. They lived uh, immediately, they called uh, Nevada City Ostama, and they had a campsite over by uh, where the courthouse and the courthouse lawn is now and all in through that area. Out on Cement Hill was the Rancheria or the uh, uh, reservation. Rancheria is just a nice name. And we are very fortunate to have some of their baskets in our collection. They were known for the watertight baskets that they actually boiled their acorn mush in. And they were typically of this size for a cooking basket. Ours are considered of particular interest in that these haven't come from a collector who's collected pristine baskets. These actually have been used 
and worn and repaired over the years. You can see the repairs inside. And uh, all of these came from various members of the historical society and community who wanted to preserve them and have them someplace where they could be seen by the public. We also have a collection of pictures of people who actually lived on the Rancheria, the Nishinan descendants from that era. Okay, thank you for joining us here at the Firehouse Museum. We're open May through October uh, from 1 o'clock to 4 p.m. and closed on Mondays. Then during the winter, we close from October till May. Hey, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradadini. Welcome to Grass Valley. Yes, we love Grass Valley. Christy was actually born here in Grass Valley. Great restaurants around here. Right now we're sitting in front of Sergio's. We've got outside dining, inside dining. And you can just about pick any restaurant you want to in the end of the week, can't you, Christy? Yes, you can. And I personally love the homemade yonki here. Yeah, I do too. 
We're going to take you for a tour a little bit here of all the areas that we like. And here we are in downtown Grass Valley at Smith Winery, tasting room. Thank you. We're getting a nice taste of their local wine here that has been family owned for years. There are many great wineries here in Nevada County, and this is just one of them. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. And I love looking at the vineyards, you know, when there's just rows and rows of vines growing in the pasture land. Which reminds me, pasture, we can go from pasture land and, and valleys to high mountain peaks just in our area alone. Yeah, just the other day, showing property, I went from one end of the county to the next and it was a gorgeous day, a beautiful drive and it's a good reminder of where we live and why we live here. It's just beautiful. One of my favorite things are the rivers. Oh, yes. The rivers are right at our fingertips and they're just such a great place to go cool off. And the trails, lots mm -hmm. of hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding trails in this area. Yeah, there's just so much to offer here and I think it's just it's quality of life and family and just things to do, not just uh, if you're not into bicycling or, or hiking, if you're into just the, in history and checking out the area or music or theater or the arts. Um, there is just, there's just so much here. I know from young to old, whether you're retiring or beginning a family or it's just the place you want to reside, it's just it's got everything. It's got something for everyone. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And again, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradadini. And we really appreciate you coming into Red Grass Valley with us. One of the best things about living here in Grass Valley is our history. And no other group made more of an impact than the Cornish miners when they came here to work in the Empire Mine at Hard Rock Mining. And they brought their cuisine. And something that's still here that's delicious is a Cornish pasty. And today, the ladies of Marshall's Pasties is going to show me how to make a pasty. Let's go see how I do. We're inside where the operation happens here at Marshall's Pasties and we're with Carrie here, one of the owners. Say hi to everybody out there. Hi there. Hey, this is, you got a lot of fans out there, Carrie. Oh, and, and tell everybody, wonderful. Tell everybody how long you've been making pasties in here. Uh, we've been making pasties for 45 years. Right in the same place, right? Yes. The same kitchen, 45 same kitchen, years. 45 years. <laughs> and over here we got the helpers in, uh, what's your name? I'm Carol. And you are? Jessie. And Jesse, and they're going to be busily making those pasties because they've got so many orders all the time. But today, Carrie's actually going to show me how to enrobe the meat and make this beautiful looking pasty. We're going fold over. Fold your corner Oops. in kind of tight. And I'll fold my corner in tight. Tight. Okay. Down. Down. It's going down like the ribbon, and now, here we go, go now. over and tuck it with your one finger as you go. Or tuck as it with you my finger? As you roll it, tuck it. Tuck, no, don't. Just pull it over. All right, pull it over and tuck. Just tuck it. And pull then your pasty won't flatten out. Pull it over and tuck it. Then I, this part's really got to, you got to do it or it'll fall out, right? Bad. Not bad. Around. See, you just have to learn how to push that down. You're doing good. Okay, <laughs> now, now show them now what we do here. This is, and tell everybody what that is. Would you like to do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Every pasty this. has it's a different hole, so you know what it is. Oh, and that's this a has hole. one. And what holes that for? What that's I just That's a made? beef. Beef. Okay, it's a beef hole. It's and beef. now this and is then, like the fun part where you get to pan. And pam. then you're gonna baste it like this. How many mm -hmm. times do I do it? Just like that. Mm -hmm. well, they're laughing at me. So you don't get too much. How's that? <laughs> well, we're at Marshall's Pasties here on Mill Street in downtown Grass Valley. Thank you so much, <laughs> ladies. You're welcome. Heather McDonald here on the town in downtown Grass Valley, and we're going to go into Grass Valley Gifts and meet the owner. And now I'm inside with the owner. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, I'm Chantel, and I'm the owner of Grass Valley Gifts. 
Chantel, I love the way you have Grass Valley logos on so many things. Tell people what you can put Grass Valley on. Um, pretty much anything. It's pretty in endless. Um, sweatshirts, t-shirts, tank tops, different sportswear gear, bags. Um, oh, cool. The reusable grocery bags, I can put Grass Valley on them. So okay. it's been going really well. So you have things that are really useful, and I see you have a lot of like ball caps. Yes, yes. Um, well, we're very involved in the community with baseball with both of our kids, so oh, okay. we've been slowly growing that part of the business too. So you can put on baseball teams mm -hmm. transfers mm -hmm. too. Oh. Yeah, all sorts of logos and That's different really cool. things for the kids and the youth here in Grass Valley. So we do team hats. And then we oh. also have our hats for sale. Oh, cool. Now, what about t-shirts? Tell us about the different kinds of t-shirts you have here for everybody. Um, here at Grass Valley, well, I try to keep a wide variety of t-shirts on hand here. And you can also order anything you need. Mm -hmm. um, I have tank tops, t-shirts, sweatshirts. Um, so in it, any kind of fabric you like, any kind of size, we go from an extra small up to a four tall uh, tall T, so quite a range of different things I can order people. So okay. it's been fun. Okay, and now remind everybody where you're located. I'm here on Neal Street, 127A, Neal Street, downtown Grass Valley. Yeah, just past the Safeway parking lot and across from the side of the Del Oro is Grass Valley Gifts. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Grass Valley Courtyard Suites, just a short walk to our historic downtown of Grass Valley. Now let's take a look at the suites. Welcome to the Grass Valley Courtyard Suites and Spa in beautiful downtown Grass Valley. My name is Kathy Race. This is my husband, Steve. We built the hotel 11 years ago. This is Sarah Christensen. She is our general manager and she runs the day-to-day -day operation for the Grass Valley Courtyard Suites. Our lovely fountain and landscaping invites everyone to your home away from home atmosphere. Last year, we just added new and larger balconies for some of our rooms. The Courtyard Suites has many fabulous features to enhance any vacation, retreat, family reunion, weddings, corporate events, and much more. If you are looking for a romantic getaway, relaxing in the jacuzzi, family barbecues, or getting to know one another again, our many amenities include, of course, the swimming pool, jacuzzi, barbecue areas, and fitness center, incredible continental breakfast. And evening reception for all guests after a long day at work or relaxing after a full day of events Grass Valley has to offer. Our day spa pampers you with massages, facials, mani-pedis, and hair salon. The Grass Valley Courtyard Suites has its own unique setting with different rooms and suites, each with its own signature. Every room at the Courtyard Suites is special and different from each other. The large suites have full kitchens, living rooms, dining areas, and fireplaces. The home atmosphere is enhanced with all the finishing touches. All of the Courtyard Suites rooms include fresh ground coffee, microwaves, refrigerators, and Tempur-Pedic mattresses to make your stay as comfortable as possible. 
our indoor and outdoor meeting facilities are perfect for any corporate event, board of director meeting, presentations, or family reunions. This is Danielle, our assistant general manager. She coordinates all banquets, special events, and groups. If you're in the need for any of these things, please feel free to call Danielle at any time. We have available four groups, a catering kitchen as well. Our large patio garden area can also accommodate over a hundred people for a most memorable wedding. Hi and welcome to the Foothills. I'm Marty Caldwell, the owner. Thank you for dropping by and learning more about the Foothills Event Center and what we can do for you. The Foothills Event Center is Nevada County's newest upscale venue located in beautiful foothills of Northern California in Grass Valley. We offer you the finest in celebrations and sophisticated events and make it possible for you to impress your guests with a magical and elegant experience. A reception venue, a theatrical or concert venue, as well as the ability to accommodate outdoor shows and events. There's all kinds of wonderful musical events coming up, and we're so excited. Wait till you see this, the lineup we have. We're going to have dinner theater, we have live music, we have guitarists coming in, musicians. It'll be very exciting to have this here. Again, you know, we have a lot of art in this community, a lot of people that are very artistic, and a lot of places to go, but this gives us a nice variety, and we're working with a lot of the other organizations in the area, too, to bring you to Nevada County. Grass Valley and Nevada City and the surrounding areas, some wonderful talent. You can have your wedding here from beginning to end. We offer both the, the uh, ceremony and the banquet afterwards, your reception, and it accommodates um, up to 140 cars and we can have up to 600 people, yes. If you have your wedding and ceremony here, the nice thing about the Foothills Event Center is that you can party and have your reception go into the wee hours of the morning because we're indoors and that means the noise ordinance is not applied to you at all. So that's one benefit of having it. Plus, we have air conditioning and heating all new here at the event center. You can visit the Foothills anytime between 9 and 5, Monday through Friday, and find out more about our event center and what we can do for you and serve your needs. There's always someone here to help you. We look forward to seeing you here at the Foothills Event Center in Grass Valley, California, real soon. I'm at the corner of South Auburn and Empire Streets, and I want you to meet my chiropractor, Dr. Darwin S. Leak here of the Chiropractic Plus Clinic. Hello there, I'm Dr. Darwin Leak, uh, owner and operator of Chiropractic Plus in Grass Valley, California. Been here since 1985 and really like it here. I'd like you to meet Kathy Sousa, office manager, and uh, if you're have any difficulties and need an appointment, she'll help you with that. She knows how to do it. I'd like to show you around a little bit, show you what we have here to offer. Well, here we have a full x-ray facility. Uh, so if someone comes in and they've had some trauma or there's a uh, suspicion of a fracture or more serious uh, hard tissue damage, we can do x-rays right here on site. Um, so that's available. Uh, we also have an uh, intersegmental traction table. Uh, that's helpful for people to restore motion in their spine. And traction if they have a hot disc or something along those lines. Well, here's one of the treatment rooms in the office. And uh, we're able to provide uh, gentle manipulation of the spine to restore motion. Uh, people have trauma. They have injuries. They overdo it at home. Uh, chiropractic manipulation has been shown to uh, facilitate and speed up healing processes. Uh, we deal with uh, motor vehicle accident uh, patients. Uh, weekend warriors uh, they do go out and overdo it on their bicycle or in their triathlon or whatever. And we have ultrasound therapy and laser therapy available. Uh, there are conditions that respond well to that. Uh, sprains, strains, soft tissue swelling. We also offer uh, massage therapy. 
and have a massage therapist on staff uh, to meet your needs there. We welcome you to come in at any time. Thanks. Hello, I'm Shalene Holland, manager of the Alta Sierra Biblical Gardens. I invite you to visit our beautiful gardens with Christ as its theme. The Alta Sierra Biblical Gardens are a nonprofit organization open to the public. These lovely gardens dedicated to God are available for events such as weddings, church and memorial services, and baptisms for a donation. Our gardens tell the story of Christ through statues and artwork displayed along the shady garden paths. A 90-foot cascading waterfall fills the stream which flows through the property, giving many lovely photographic opportunities. A large outdoor chapel can seat 150 guests. The chapel has an altar with brilliant stained glass and a canopy of trees and vines. The picnic grounds may be rented for a rehearsal dinner, Bible studies, luncheons, or a daytime event. No barbecuing or open fires are permitted. Alcohol is also prohibited. Baptisms and the natural pool highlighted by a small waterfall are encouraged with a donation of $10 per person to help with the upkeep of this area. There is also a labyrinth, a sacred tool for prayer. It is a contemplative garden space. The gardens are open daily from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. They are a place of meditation, reflection, and retreat. The sprinklers are on Sunday through Thursday at 7 p.m. We accept any support you can provide from monetary donations to working in the gardens. Contact me at 530-272-1363 or visit our website at www.altasierrabiblicalgardens.org. Hi, it's Marty Caldwell. We're at Rough and Ready Vineyards and Guest House. It's a family-owned vineyard and guest house here that sleeps 16 people. We're welcoming you here to see a little bit more about our wonderful facility. Our unique 16-acre estate under the Heritage Oaks has plenty of room for your family and friends to get together, spend some time, barbecuing, exploring, enjoying beautiful Nevada County, and celebrating any event you might have to gather together for. Here at the Rough and Ready Vineyards and Guest House, we have a beautiful vacation rental. It's four bedrooms, three baths, and has beds for 16 people. We have an elegant master suite that has a beautiful bath, including a clawfoot tub. One of the most unique features here at the guest house is our beauty salon. It has a chair and sink. We also have a dressing room. Besides the master bedroom, we have three private bedrooms and a sunroom, all featuring sleeping for your guests. We have a great room that features a wood-burning stove, a large screen TV complete with satellite. We have a fully equipped kitchen that really is a perfect place for a family to gather cook together and share. We have an on-site chapel that can be used for many things. Some guests have used it for weddings, receptions, family reunions, dinners, or just as a gathering place with family and friends. Our beautiful 16 acres features an Italian marble gazebo many meadows, a bridge over our seasonal creek, and of course our family vineyard, which you're free to walk through or even plan intimate dinners between the vines. Ja, 
I'm inside the Rescue for Pets Sake store with the person who's behind this. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, I'm Pamela Gorman, the founder of Rescue for Pets Sake. Yes, you are. And that's been going on at least more than 20 years, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Over 20 years I've been rescuing dogs. Yes, you have. And now, for the first time, you have a store. Yes, we have an office and a store in uh -huh. this location. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. It's right across from the UPS store here on Bank Street. And so what kind of items are we going to find in here, Pam? Oh, what we are in Grass Valley, right downtown, which is historical downtown on Bank Street, we have collectibles, antiques, and retail items. Some of them are used items. They have to be pretty good quality, though. Um, we don't have a lot of room, so we, we're just keeping good quality items here, gifty items, things mm -hmm. people can use. So if people want to donate, they, they call here and meet with you, and maybe you're going to be a little picky about some of the things you take in? Right, because we're limited on storage, but if you have a nice couch or a chair or something, furniture, mm -hmm. we could always take a picture of that. I'm real good with networking, That's and, right. and um, we can sell it that way. Yes, uh -huh. and 100% of the proceeds go to animals like this. 100% of the proceeds, did you hear that? 100, because you've been volunteering for so long. Pam has her own TV show, in fact, here on Public Access. What's the name of your show? For Pet's Sake, That's and right. it started over 20 years ago. Yes, where she shows the pets there for adoption, like, like Bauer. That's his name here. Look, yes. uh, Bauer's eight weeks old, and he's ready for his forever home. Ready for a forever home right here. And so you have some of the dogs right here for people to see. Yes. Now, who's this little sweetie? This is Sweet Pea, and she's also in the program. She's a Pomeranian Chihuahua. She's about six years old, and she gives kisses, and she just... They're so easy. They're just, I love animals. <laughs> now, how can we uh, find you to see what pets are up for adoption? Um, you could go on Facebook. I'm networking. I'm constantly under Pamela Gorman, parentheses, quick, or we have a rescue for pet sake page. Mm -hmm. And they can always call me. We also put them on Pet Finder, adoptapet.com. And um, we uh, have an adoptathon once a month at Petco, first Saturday of every month. Oh, yeah. Once a month, she has her adopt-a-thon. And you rescue a lot of dogs that are really having a hard time finding a home. Sometimes. Sometimes we just get them yeah. and they have no issues at all. I mean, they're, these have had a wonderful start. Mm -hmm. These puppies, and there are uh, a few of them behind us. We have two litters of puppies right now. These puppies ended up in Placer County Animal Shelter. They call us. And our wonderful Wendy Horn uh, offered to foster them, and so did Melinda Landsberg. And um, we've got, they're just, they were with their moms. They, they were dumped there. It was a hoarder situation. And uh, we got them the day, the day boy. after they were born. So they've had a wonderful start. And um, if you're interested, <laughs> they can always call me, right? see his face. Of course, he's not going to look at the camera. Bauer is secure. Look, look at that face. He belongs in a forever home, and then you can help them, even if you can't adopt them, you can help them by coming to the store here and buying something. Yes, yes, <laughs> we have many items that um, people, variety of items, antiques, like I said, collectibles, and also back to regarding foster. We do need foster homes, we oh, need yes, foster. volunteers, and we need, um, oh God, volunteers, of foster homes, and forever homes, obviously. And they could always come in and, and uh -huh. talk to me about our program, our policies, okay. and how we do now, things. Now, when's the store open? The store opens uh, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 4. And what used to be here? Because they might know who Dr. Here. William DeBro was uh, practicing here in this office, and I actually was working for him. For many years. For, for about yeah. 10 years. And um, we, we pondered it, and uh, wonderful Beverly Marks, who owns the building, offered a wonderful lease lease situation where we would be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. And um, now we get to use the building to help these wonderful animals that come from all over, not just Grass Valley. Okay. I've, I've actually saved dogs out of Georgia. Yes, I know. She saves a lot of animals. So rescue for pet's sake right here across from the UPS store in historic downtown Grass Valley. Thanks for being with us, Pam. Thank you.
everybody. I, uh, I'm Madeline Hilling, and I'm president of the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad Museum. And we have um, many other forms of transportation here, too. And I would like to uh, introduce our curator, Brian Blair, who will give you some details about what we represent here. Well, thank you, Madeline. Uh, welcome to the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad and Transportation Museum. Um, our museum is dedicated to restoring and preserving all the history of, of all elements of transportation in the county. Uh, we had stagecoaches here, we had uh, electric streetcars, we had horses and ba uh, buggies, we had steam cars, and of course we had the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad. And this museum, while it is a transportation museum, most of the artifacts in here are focused towards the era of the narrow gauge. Uh, behind me is engine number five. This is an old Baldwin locomotive. It was built in 1875. And it came to this railroad in 1899 and served here for 44 years. So it ran between Nevada City through Grass Valley to Colfax. It was finally sold, went off to its last career as a movie engine for Universal Studios. And then we were fortunate to get it back from Universal Studios in 1985 through the efforts of Madeline Helling and John Christensen and some of the early members of the Transportation Museum. museum goes back a ways. The, uh, we've been open 10 years. This was really a community effort supporting us all the way. And the city of Nevada City certainly has been the instrumental in this whole thing. This is really the city of Nevada City's museum. The Historical Society had established the uh, concept and worked toward it and then have continued to be in charge of it through the years. Marty Caldwell, thank you for coming tonight to the Let's Come Paint With Us. We're excited to have you here. We have a lot of paintings that people are painting this evening, and we'd love to see you here too. Tonight, each of our artists will be taking home a 16 by 20 painting they made themselves, bringing out that artist that is inside of each one of us that very often is not tapped into. We're excited. We're at the Foothills Event Center here in downtown Grass Valley area, and this is for locals and also for visitors too. Please check us out online at comepaintwithus.com for a calendar of events and times. You'll enjoy it and you'll go away feeling better about yourself and taking this wonderful painting with you. We look forward to having you come paint with us. This is my first time painting this class and I love it. It's so relaxing and I'm not an artist. So it's very relaxing and fun and come down for a glass of wine and join us. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, can you drink some wine? Paint some pictures. Good vibes. I brought my mother-in-law tonight just to get out and do something different. This is a lot of fun. Neither of us have ever taken a class like this. I'm, I'm having a good time. I don't know anything about painting. But. This class is pretty awesome, for, especially for first timers. They tell you everything you need to know, and it's a great experience. And, and, uh, come and join us. I think it's amazing how everybody's painting is different, even though they're the same colors, and we're following the same guideline. It's fun.
Hi, I'm here at Molkoff Dickens State Park. Introduce yourself to everybody out there. My name is Dave Anderson. I'm a, a, brain, a docent here at this park, as, as well as two other parks in the county. I also happen to be the co-chair of the Friends of North Bloomfield and Malakoff Diggins, which is a nonprofit organization that supports the park. Now tell a little a bit about North Bloomfield. I don't think people realize we have a, well, it's not really a ghost town. It's a, it's a, it's a preserved town, right? Yes, we, uh, we try and, uh, and we're actively trying to promote uh, visitation, not just to the, uh, the hydraulic mining area, but the town of North Bloomfield, which grew up uh, as a major town during the, uh, the, the hydraulic mining era. And uh, the town existed until uh, shortly after World War II when everybody ended up going to the war. <laughs> yeah, but you can really get a feel for what it was like like today. Now, what's special about Humbug Day today? Well, it, it used to be homecoming. So uh, every year the residents or past residents of the town would come back and visit. And uh, the original name of the town, uh, the people wanted to call it Humbug, which is a term used to identify uh, an area that really busted in terms of gold. So, but, but because there were so many towns named Humbug, the post office would not allow them to use that name, so it ended up being North Bloomfield. That's interesting. And so this is kind of an annual event here? Yes, this is our 50th. This is the 50th one. Yes. So every June, come to Humbug Days. Yep. And but now during the week, people can come on our weekends, right? And look in the houses Absolutely. and little stores. And Absolutely, everything. the museum will be open. Uh, we have mm -hmm. a campground here. And we also have some cabins that people can rent and stay in. How fun! That would really be fun up here. So you got to come up and see this part of our gold country. Well, thanks for being on here with us. Thank you. And here we are with the visitor here at Humbug Days. And what's your name? Diane Emmett. And is this your first visit to North Bloomfield? No, no. This, I've been coming here since 1955. You have? Yes. It wasn't a park then. But, uh huh. But yes. And so you're a local here in Nevada County. Yes. Oh, great. And so why do you like uh, coming here to visit our little town here? It's just, it's just, um, it's wonderful. All the people getting together, having a good time, learning the history, mm -hmm. and um, it's just a fun thing to do. And you know, most locals don't even know a lot of our history, do they? No, they don't. No. It's, uh, there's a lot of tales to be told yes, about, about sure. this country. But it's, but it's wonderful, and the, and the people, um, the people are great. They're they're so warm and accepting, and it's just fun. Just fun, fun thing to do. It is a fun thing to do. It's good to remind us about not only our history, but like you said, how great the people are when we all get together up here for something like this, huh? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Thank I you. Appreciate it. And now we're in the museum here at North Bloomfield with the ranger of this area, and your name is? Hi, my name is Ryan Randar. I'm the unit ranger for Malakoff Diggins. Wow, and Malakoff Diggins is a pretty big area, isn't it? It is. It's where all the hydraulic mining happens, so you've got all of that. It's not just North Bloomfield. It's like, it must be what? How many miles around here, I would say? It's I think big. I have roughly between two and th 3,000 uh, acres. Two and 3,000 acres, wow. And so tell people a little bit about this museum. You know, I've never been in here in all these years. Well, this is our museum here at Malakoff. Uh, we have artifacts of all kinds of, um, or, and all kinds of things that were found actually in the park. They represent a little bit of everyone who was here. Um, we have things on mining, we have things on the people, so mm -hmm. yeah. some of the things really made in the area, like uh, the sewing machine was made actually in North San Juan. Oh, cool. And so for Humbug Days today, did you like repaint the buildings and fix it all up? or? So we did have a maintenance team out here doing some yeah. um, restoring of the buildings, making it all, sprucing it up for the, for the uh -huh. event. Yeah, that's really nice. Yes. Now, is it open year-round here, or when can people come visit? It is. So the park is open year-round. Um, the visitor center does close seasonally, depending on staffing and, and budget. So that's that's always the, the one kicker. Yeah. But uh, we try to have people here. We try um, on weekends year-round. Okay. So. Now, can people camp here year-round, or is there certain They can't. Um, 
our main season is going to be Memorial through Labor Day weekend. Okay, Maru, but that's great that you could camp here too, because it's so beautiful with all the big trees here and everything, and, and then going down, I think the uh, hydraulic mining areas look like fairy castles. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a beautiful campground. We have 30 spots, and we also have three cabins. Oh, three cabins. And so we just can go online to the state park's website then. That's correct, and it'll redirect you, or you can go directly to, at this time, reserveamerica.com. Reserveamerica.com. I think it'd be fun to stay in one of the cabins. And just to remind you that hydraulic mining was actually invented here in Nevada City at Deer Creek. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and look what happened. This great, big, beautiful park. And it's so nice that you've preserved it. Well, thank you. And we, you can actually feel like you have gone back to the gold rush when you visit North Bloomfield here at Malakoff Dagen State Park. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. And here I am with someone who's a real local to this area. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, Heather. Uh, I'm Patrick Dyer. Uh, I own Utopian Stone Jewelers in Nevada City. We've been in business there for 42 years, and we're very much a part of the gold country like is here. Yes, and especially Nevada City. You've been involved in the politics there and the, the history of it and everything. Yeah, we have. Um, um, I was served on the city council for eight years. I was a mayor for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Did a lot with this with the uh, 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 chamber of commerce. Saw a lot of changes back in the 70s and 80s, and in the 90s we restored the city hall. That's right. And the bridge. Mm -hmm. And there's been an awful lot of work done in Nevada City that. We, take, we kind of take for granted now. We enjoy it, how beautiful it is. It was a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication from a lot of people from way back into the 60s. So Nevada City is kind of the, you go through Nevada City to come up here to the Diggins and everything. And how, how did, was Nevada City related to Molokov? Well, Nevada City uh, was kind of the queen city of the northern mines, and mm -hmm. so there was a, there were a lot of mining headquarters were based in Nevada City, and um, uh, there was a lot of gold was brought into Nevada City. Um, it was just a central location. Of course, the Grass Valley had the Empire Mine, and that was all underground mining, mm -hmm. so there was, it was absolutely built around gold. Yes, and Nevada City was a shaken city and pretty exciting, <laughs> and this hydraulic mining actually started there by some miners that were uh, looking for gold right there in Deer Creek. Um, yeah, that was called coyote diggings for a while. Yeah. And um, yeah, there was all sorts of crude methods of dig getting the gold out when it was relatively plentiful mm -hmm. and pretty easy to get and so forth. So that was the, the early days of, uh, they called it uh, uh, coyote diggings in Nevada yeah. City. Mm -hmm. And they found out if they took a hose and put a nozzle on it and aimed it at the bank of the creek and everything, it would wash away and get to that gravel where there was more gold, right? Right. The gold was found in all kinds of different locations. And, of course, the gravel deposits that were here and down in, in some of Nevada City and so forth were, were removed by water and mm -hmm. separated out by water and so forth. And uh, the hydraulic monitors that you see all over here and mm -hmm. in Nevada City were key equipment in washing the gold away from the mountains. Don't you think it's also amazing when you see Deer Creek and how it started and you come up here to Molokov and see these big mountains that have been washed into cones? Yeah, well, and, and, and in, in, in our store we have a hydraulic monitor that's on display and it's there as, as to show the history of how the gold was, was mined around here, one of the ways, and um, the, the, it was an environmental disaster. Yeah. And yet it was uh, very, very profitable, so there was a lot of politics going on as to would it continue or not. And the Sawyer decision of 1878 was the first environmental law in the country. And it was about the uh, washing away of the gravels, the, the heavy silting that happened in the rivers. Mm -hmm. um, the stories say there was a plume of silt going out past the Golden Gate. And so wow. the realization that that yeah. was such an environmental disaster, disaster 
uh, the Sawyer decision of 1878 spawned the, um, the ending of hydraulic right. mining. Uh, ironically, um, the hydraulic mining was allowed to, it took about 10 years to go through the courts. Mm -hmm. Hydraulic mining was actually allowed to continue, um, but after 10 years of being dead, uh, mm -hmm. they'd moved on from other, to other means of, of mining and it never did re regenerate as, a, as an ongoing uh, way to remove the gold. But then I heard that uh, when the federal inspectors would come up to make sure they were no longer mining that way, and they were on the side, some of, some of the operations, they'd go into the hotel down there and the operator would call up here and they would stop everything. And by the time the inspector got up here, there's no hydraulic mining, but everything was wet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard similar stories, and I'm sure it was true. There's a lot uh, yeah, of stories. I'm sure it was true. But the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the mining was, was allowed to re, uh, restart uh, if they used uh, certain oh, really? uh, dams to collect the oh, water. Um, yeah. But again, after 10 years of doing it, uh, or not doing it, the, they ceased operations completely. So, but it's interesting because it was the first environmental law in the country. Previous to that, you know, you could do just about anything as long as you made money. And, and then it was, a, it was a change of consciousness, if you will. So you can, you, you, everybody needs to mine, everybody needs to farm, but we can't destroy the planet at the same at time. At the same time. Yeah. So if you want to know more about the gold rush up here, I'd go into Utopia Stone, because you're going to see what he makes out of gold. <laughs> this is just a few examples of the things that Pat does. It's just beautiful jewelry and stone. Thank I you. I love it. Thank oh, you. yeah. And then, like you said, he has a monitor in there. This is a man that really cares about our history and knows about it. So you need to go into Utopia Stone and tell them what corners you're on. It. We're right at the corner of Pine and Broad Street, 301 yeah. Broad Street, right in the middle of town. You, you can't miss us. Uh, it's a beautiful building and quite historic in its own right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, come on by. We'd love to see you. And I'm, I'm leaning against this machine, this which cool. I just learned about. Yeah. This was a sewing machine built in North San Juan. Am I correct? and was in service for, I believe, 55 years. What it did was it made the canvas hose that fed the water to the monitors. That, that's just go. incredible. Yeah. And apparently it has four needles and did st four stitches at the same time. I mean, it's the necessity is the mother of invention. And so they needed to bring the water to the monitors. They invented a machine to make the hose. That's I mean, right. It's, it's incredible. Well, if you love history and you love museums, we've got a lot of them in Nevada County. And we have some of the, all the like the original equipment like this one. It's it's really pretty exciting when you come and visit our area up here in Nevada County. Thank you, Pat, for being on here with me. Thank you, Pat. My pleasure. Yeah, would you introduce yourself to everybody? I'm Matthew Green. I'm a chief ranger for the Sierra District, and I um, manage parks, state parks on the eastern and western Sierras, and most especially here, uh, Malakoff Diggin State Park, uh, Empire Mine State Park, and South U Yuba River State Park. Wow, you cover a lot of territory. <laughs> I do. Great parks, great territory. And here today, tell everybody a little bit about Malakoff and how special it is. Well, Malakoff Diggins uh, State Historic Park, 50 year anniversary here today on Humbug Days. Um, uh, example of um, hydraulic mining. We have three parks here in Western Nevada, three different examples of mining, uh, hard rock mining at Empire Mine. Uh, placer mining at South Yuba and hydraulic mining here. We have the uh, Diggins where all the mining, uh, hydraulic mining took place. It happened with some of our monitors here that are in the parks that actually uh, were used to extract the gold out the sides of the hillside. Uh, very famous in, um, in U.S. Uh, legal history for, um, for the first class action lawsuit that had to do with the mining operations up here, but probably more famous for the people that made up this town that's still in place. Some of the original buildings here, some of the original occupants, and we have people that lived here 50 years ago that come up here on this um, humbug days, or, and you can see them around the park right now. Well, what's unique about it and all of our collective mining operations here in, in the county is that the technology that we've driven to these areas that made up these mining operations uh, the Excelsior ditch, the ditch system that drove the water systems down into the monitors that were used to extract the gold from the hillsides. Obviously some damages today from it, but incredible, incredible work at that time. And you could see some of those pumps, 
some of that technology and, and some of that history all throughout the park. It's an outdoor museum. There's just fantastic trails and fun things to do here. We encourage you to come up and if you're locals here in Nevada County, you need to support your state parks. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you for you. having me.